But one of the objections a lot of people say is the amount of sugar. And I know I've heard you talk about this a lot, but just for those people who have been listening and they're um, heard about the Gerson treatment and they're concerned about the sugar, um, can you just talk for a couple minutes on, on, uh, on that subject? Why is it that we're the only ones in medical history to have a peer-reviewed study proving the ability to reverse advanced terminal cancer? Nobody's at reversing advanced terminal cancer with the rates that the Gerson therapy is. But how can that be when we're getting when the patients are getting six thousand calories a day of fruit and vegetable sugars? The whole premise that that sugar feeds cancer is. It's a false premise and nothing could be further from the truth when and only when the cellular environment inside the cell is set up properly to break down sugar into ATP. ATP being the energy molecule that the body produces. You need ATP to eat, sleep, drink, walk, talk. You need it to maintain a healthy immune system. And you most certainly need it to cure a sick and dying one. Mm-hmm. When you see somebody who's sick and or dying, what's one of the first things you notice? They're lethargic. Why are they lethargic? Because they've lost the capacity to produce energy on a cellular level. And the primary way the body creates energy is through the breakdown of sugars. And it's when the environment inside the cell is optimal for the breakdown of sugars that sugars actually help fight disease rather than cause it. And the whole principle, the whole secret to that is proper oxygen utilization by the body. It has nothing to do with the consumptions of sugar. It has everything to do with the proper cellular environment to break it down and create energy. And that all happens in the mitochondria and the things that are required to produce energy on a cellular level are sugars, oxygen, and a myriad of nutrients that the mitochondria need to run its energy cycles. How does the body create energy on a cellular level? There's something called the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle is what takes place inside the cell in the mitochondria. So sugar is supposed to enter the cells and go through the Krebs cycle. But it will only do that to its final production of energy on a cellular level. It will only do that if oxygen is present and available. If you can't get oxygen into that cell, into that mitochondria, you're not going to produce energy on a cellular level. So under what principles would it be true that sugar feeds cancer? Well, you hear it floated around all the time that acidity causes disease, right? Mm -hmm. You've heard that constantly, that disease can't survive in a highly oxygenated environment. Well, great, but what does that mean? What does that mean on a cellular level? Well, when we're talking about acidity, what are we talking about? We're talking about pH, the pH balance. Well, pH means potential hydrogen. So acidity, by definition, is the buildup of hydrogen ions in the body. And the more buildup you have of hydrogen ions in the cells, the less oxygen you can utilize. Because once a cell is positively charged with hydrogen, as oxygen approaches that cell for entry, it will literally get repelled away. So that's truly the reason why acidity is so deadly to the body. Because if sugar enters the Krebs cycle without any oxygen available, it's not going to get broken down to energy. It's going to get broken down to lactic acid. That's called anaerobic, without oxygen, anaerobic glycolysis. And the breakdown of sugar without oxygen forms lactic acid. And lactic acid is food for cancer. It feeds on lactic acid. In the proper, when you create the proper cellular environment, release the acidity by drinking 20 pounds of fruits and vegetables every day. That neutralizes the acidity, creates an alkaline environment. Oxygen can properly be utilized by the body. Then you bombard bombard the body with all the nutrients available in the juices because you need, the mitochondria also need those nutrients to run their cycles. They need oxygen, sugar, magnesium, potassium, iron, zinc, all of those things to run the energy cycles. And finally, 
The primary principle of the Gerson therapy is absolutely no sodium, added sodium on the Gerson diet okay. and bombarding the body with potassium. Why? Because sodium causes the buildup of, of edema or water in the cells and the mitochondria cannot function in that environment. So on the Gerson therapy, you will get absolutely no added sodium other than what naturally occurs, occurs in fruits and vegetables. And we bombard the body with potassium. And what happens in all of our patients, and it would happen in you and me, is that a load of sodium and water over a five to seven day period, and actually over months, but in large amounts over a five to seven day period, large amounts of sodium and water rush out of the cell and the cell's integrity begins to restructure itself so that the mitochondria can function properly. So it's those principles that make sugar absolutely vital in the cure of cancer. And if you don't eliminate those variables that I mentioned, sugar can feed cancer, but not the sugar. It's the lactic acid that sugar's broken down into.